Okay. So after the introduction, we can start um, having a look at this JavaScript language, the language of the web. I wrote here because actually is the, the the mandatory language for developing a uh, web application. Here, I just copied some images of uh, cheat sheets uh, with some uh, uh, basic uh, function from the standard library. Of course, we are not uh, learning them by heart today, but uh, there are several resources. This one is very compact, so it can be useful if you just remember this link here. So the goal here is to learn JavaScript, first of all, as a language, okay? For the first hours, we will not care about the web. We will forget about the browsers, forget about web application, and just understanding, okay, there's this, there's this new language, what's the, what's the, how it works and the, what are its characteristics. Of course, you already know programming in other languages, so many of the concepts here would be borrowed from what you already know in other languages. Uh, we will have two different uh, environments in which to run our, to execute our JavaScript programs. One is the browser, which is the main target of our programming, and the other is this node uh, interpreter. Node.js is, uh, oh, it's a strange story. It was developed uh, by extracting the JavaScript interpreter from a browser and then recompiling it for a server. So the, uh, it's a fork of the uh, JavaScript, node is a fork of the JavaScript interpreter inside Chrome. Because people started to understand that it was important and useful to be able to write and debug programs, uh, JavaScript program outside of the browser, so without all the interactivity. Um, we will work with the version, no, JavaScript is a language with in continuous evolution. Uh, we'll say a, a bit about the history at some point. Uh, there were some modern features uh, that were introduced uh, and we will we'll work with them, with those. So we'll uh, forget about how JavaScript was in the 95, 1995. And work uh, with uh, how JavaScript looks like after 2015 or 2018. With the new features of the language that really made it a more modern language uh, and more robust language also. Uh, since the language is uh, constantly evolving, uh, we may have control over the version of the Node.js from the time that we run on our computer. And different versions would support different features of the language. But we don't have control about which version of the browser my users in the world are using. So maybe uh, some people are still uh, navigating my website with uh, a version of uh, Chrome uh, which is two years old because they didn't update it. And so that version will not, will not uh, support all the new features of my program. So how to solve this problem? We are in a live and open environment. So if I write a program using the feature of the languages the feature that the JavaScript language supported 10 years ago, I'm sure that it will run everywhere. But I'm not uh, uh, exploiting the new features. So there's no sense in evolving a language if you cannot use the new features. And that if you use the new features, then your website will only be um, navigated or will only work for those who have fully updated browsers. And you don't want to keep everybody else out. The solution in the JavaScript world is called uh, transpiling. So what happens is that uh, when a new feature is introduced into the, la uh, the language, there will be a step of the compilation that will translate the new feature using the old syntax. So if a browser is navigating your website and doesn't support the latest features, it will not run, okay, the JavaScript that we see will be a transformed version from what you have. So this is something that, of course, will create uh, from your application many variants uh, according to the level of the client of the browser, and each of them will only have a subset of supported functionality. It's something very 
complicated and this is uh, usually part of the build, uh, the build procedure of the JavaScript application. Okay, we are not going to detail about that. We are just uh, understanding that it's there, this mechanism is there, and will allow us to use uh, modern language features uh, and at the same time have, have our application to be compatible also with older runtime environments. Hmm? Um, okay, so what is JavaScript? It's a programming language, of course. It's, uh, well, depending on the statistics that you look at, uh, uh, it's one of the three most uh, popular programming languages together with Python and Java. Okay, some people put C++ or C Sharp above. Uh, there's a, a rise also in the TypeScript, <coughs> which is an evolution, well, you see, uh, uh, an evolution of JavaScript, uh, where we uh, they added a strong typing to JavaScript itself. So JavaScript is a language with types very it has objects and types and so on, but uh, there it's weakly type. If you know Python, it's similar. Uh, you can declare variables of any type and change it and so on. And uh, while types, it enforces the types uh, or the values contained in every variable, in every function parameter, in every return value and so on. Uh, type is not, a lang it's not an independent language. It's a language which is compiled to JavaScript. So the TypeScript compiler compiles, takes a TypeScript source and compiles it to JavaScript, which is then run by the browser or by node. Okay? But a lot of people are finding TypeScript useful because, it's static, because of its static checking. Hmm? It builds on the JavaScript, uh, JavaScript philosophy, uh, but it has uh, checking and, and, and it's gaining popularity, basically. Uh, but we stick with uh, basic JavaScript. Uh, again, we only have 60 hours. Hmm? Um, it's the only language that the browser can execute natively, so we are. Uh, that's why we choose it. Um, and uh, it also runs uh, on Node.js, so we can run it uh, on a server or on a standalone computer. The name JavaScript uh, has nothing to do with the Java language except for marketing purposes uh, in the 1991, uh, in those years, where JavaScript was written in 10 days uh, by the developers of, uh, of the first, uh, one of the first browsers, uh, Netscape. And uh, they wanted to give some interactivity, some flashy effect on the pages, so they needed a scripting language. And one person worked for 10 years uh, to implement the first version of the language. They needed a name. And at that moment, uh, in those years, uh, um, some microsystems was investing a lot in the Java language and the Java ecosystem. So they said, okay, this Java name is uh, very well known to the, uh, sorry, in, in the press uh, and the public relations and so on. So let's call it JavaScript so that people think that it's a part of that ecosystem was just a stunt. But then, now we are sticking with the name. Who cares? And we are sticking with some design choices that were made in those 10 days. And it hurts hmm? sometimes. OK. Uh, and so what happened? 1995 is the first version of the language. It was written by Ike here. Um, it was the first time that uh, JavaScript appeared in a product. And after that, uh, people, of course, realized that it was, in, it was initially integrated only in the Netscape browser. There were, at, at that point, uh, Microsoft didn't uh, still understand the, the internet well. So at the beginning, they said, well, this internet is not so in interesting. And then uh, they published the first version of uh, Internet Explorer. We, they saw that Netscape was adding scripting functionality to HTML pages, so they added scripting functionality to Net, uh, Internet Explorer too, but with their own language. It was called VBScript. It was based on Visual Basic huh? because it was their language. And uh, of course, it couldn't work. 
you couldn't imagine people writing application developers investing time in creating an application that will only work with a specific browser because different browsers would use different languages so they had they understood quite quickly that they had to standardize one language to work across browsers but standardize uh, with quotes uh, because uh, standard is something which uh, is supposed to be fixed uh, and people want to innovate to add features to make my browser better than yours so that you will have the features that my browser has and your still hasn't so you need to catch up and try to implement it too and so there were innovations by browser manufacturers to the language and each uh, browser manufacturer were copying the others uh, and trying to evolve the language and there were some uh, group of people that were trying to standardize uh, what was happening so not uh, yeah, the JavaScript language is not a standard that will define how the language will look like the language evolves uh, and every now and then the standardization says okay let's have a look uh, at what is happening and write it down at the beginning it was like this approach and uh, so people basically didn't care about the standardization because what they cared were, <laughs> were the browsers okay and so the first uh, version of the standard here were basically ignored by everybody they were standardized by a very mm, well, it's by a ECMA this ECMA international organization with nobody heard before it's a Switzerland uh, based uh, uh, institution okay they they wrote uh, the standards of not JavaScript because JavaScript was a, was a trademark by Netscape of a language called ECMAScript not uh, not many people call it ECMAScript today but this would be the official language or the official name of the language okay so the first version was, were basically okay let's write down what is happening in the browser then you see in the different versions between version 3 and version 5 don't ask me what happened before uh, there were 10 years there, 10 years were elapsed because mm, well people went in different directions there was a consensus of what to do and uh, no also the type of, uh, of web applications were the application in 1995, 1999 were already very different from, from what we were developing 10 years after. So, but after 10 years, uh, everything restarted, rebooted in a way. And they started to write a, a first version of the language that introduced uh, a, called, uh, um, a so called strict mode. What strict mode does is uh, to make a version of the language which is incompatible with the past. In the past, there were some very bad choices. Variables didn't have to be declared. Some variables were global across the whole uh, script. And, no, and stuff like that, which is very scary today. Okay? But in 10 days, they did what they could. Um, in strict mode, uh, uh, all the scary behaviors have been disabled. And the new way writing code, say, well, said, and that's why we call it more than JavaScript uh, from this point on, uh, to uh, what were introduced. Okay, so for example, we introduced classes, we introduced modules, and stuff like that. Um, and this restarted, rebooted the process, which is still ongoing today. Uh, now every year they are trying to publish a new version. Uh, we are targeting mainly this version here with some extension from from the, the new west to answer because here in the 2015 we had uh, most of the new semantics and syntax that we are using today the foundation of the new way of uh, programming in JavaScript so uh, all this all of what we are explaining say in these two weeks uh, basically is a list of these features here okay that are uh, implemented in a, in a in a standard way. Then there are something interesting also for from the the, ne the newest versions, but uh, nothing uh, nothing really game changing. Hmm? So there are different names: uh, JavaScript, modern JavaScript, ECMAScript, ECMAScript, ECMAScript five, 
or six or Emacs strip uh, yes sorry I can't uh, pronounce this word yes 2015 they all mean the same thing JavaScript from 2016 2016 on okay with some maybe uh, more modern uh, um, stuff okay uh, if you want uh, to kill yourself you can read uh, this official uh, standard document uh, which is uh, for published uh, on this uh, page it's extremely long and extremely complex to understand okay it's uh, of course uh, the specification of a language is a document that is intended from the for the implementer of the compiler or the interpreter not for the programmer of course here you have the ultimate truth about uh, uh, how the language should behave but it's not written in a way which is developer friendly the developer friendly way is on Mozilla developer uh, network okay where they are telling you how it works with examples and what browsers are supporting the features and so on uh, okay there are several uh, runtimes for JavaScript JavaScript is a mostly an interpreter language I say mostly because nobody will run an interpreter language on a browser because it would be too slow. So basically, it's, a comp it's compiled uh, with a just in time compiler, but it's transferred to us. Uh, there are, today, there are two competing runtimes one is the V8 uh, engine from Google, and the other is the Spider Monkey by Mozilla. The other browsers, uh, like Edge uh, from Microsoft and uh, Safari from Apple are all using the, the Google uh, engine. Node is also derived from the Google engine. So basically there are two libraries in the world uh, that we are using to run JavaScript programs. There's a third one which is called Dino. Dino is an anagram of Node uh, which was started uh, independently with le lesser features but for embedded system basically which are lesser resources and don't need a lot of fancy stuff. But still less run. On the Mozilla Development Network, on NDN, we also have, for every feature of the language, for example, here I had uh, uh, the fetch method, uh, a table with uh, the different uh, properties or methods of that object and the different type of browsers and the support level. So if you are really interested, you can see, okay, this is a new feature of the language. Okay, is it so new that nobody is implementing it or is it already implemented in the major browsers so you can have these tables you can uh, uh, you see that Internet Explorer is very sorry for existing and uh, and mobile ver uh, mobile uh, browsers also are very are very different from each other mm -hmm. JavaScript uh, as I said is a live language it's, it's evolving much more than other languages um, and this has a strange uh, notion of compatibility no? He says, they say that JavaScript is backwards compatible, but not forwards compatible. Uh, what does it mean? It means that, uh, let's read, this, uh, read the sentence. Once something is accepted as very JavaScript, there will not be a future change to the language that causes that code to become invalid JavaScript. What it means is that if you wrote some JavaScript 20 years ago, 25, no, not, not yet, 18 years ago, that code should, should run in today's browsers so you cannot drop features you cannot change the meaning of some you can add features but you cannot drop them or you cannot change the semantics of them this is why the strict mode was introduced if you had to change something you had to add a syntax error or something that syntactically was different to understand to to tell the browser you shouldn't um, interpret this language in the new JavaScript or in the old one. But the old one is still implemented, okay? Uh, because of this choice. Uh, it's not uh, forwards compatible. It means that uh, if you are adding something to the language, it will not run on older browsers. So you will write something today, it will work on the browser from today to the future. But you, you are, there's no guarantee that it, it could work on browsers that were developed develop before today or some years before today. Okay. Um, 
This is the opposite of what happens with the, with the HTML, for example. Okay. Uh, if you're writing some HTML page today, even all the browser can render it maybe wi without some, some element because it doesn't, doesn't understand it. Okay. But, it. but it's easy because HTML is just a markup language. You can just simply ignore something you don't understand. And so all the browsers can still render modern pages. In an ugly way, of course, but they will render. In JavaScript, it's not easy to drop something you don't understand. If you don't understand, it's syntax error. It will pop. So there is a, they made a different choice. And uh, these influences, of course, uh, the, the, um, the choices that had to be made in the language. Since if something is in the language today, it will stay there forever. And so today we still have something we don't like probably in the language, but it's there, we cannot remove it unless, unless we go back in time. What they did with strict mode was to you know, remove the really ugly experiment. But some, something else uh, is still there because there's so much code already uh, written. And this is all, all these uh, transpiling mechanisms also that are able to move, uh, help us or help the browsers move from one version from one version to the other. So we are talking about uh, uh, language, but this language is supported, is run by different uh, uh, runtimes, uh, and so maybe in some cases there can be some differences. So for example, some objects, some predefined objects are available in the browser and not available in Node or vice versa, of course, depending on the runtime environment. So the language is standardized. The standard library is not really standard because it depends on the environment. Um, okay, these are some links uh, here. Uh, one uh, tool that we are okay, we are going to work with the uh, writing code, of course, uh, in uh, in our scripts. Uh, there's one website we want to, to mention that we use sometimes. It's called the JavaScript Tutor. It has this link. Uh, it is nice because it will uh, uh, okay execute some code and show us a graphical representation of the data, of the, of the values of the variables that we are in our program. So especially at the beginning, when we are trying to understand how the, the different data structures are working, that would be very useful you know, to help us uh, to you know, uh, build a mental model of what's happening. It's not just drawing picture uh, on the, uh, the notebook, but also seeing that live, uh, how data structures are managed, uh, um, arrays, strings, uh, and stuff like that. How parameters are passed, uh, variables are modified, and so on. So we'll use it uh, during the examples. And of course, uh, in every browser, we have the JavaScript console or developing the, the developer tools uh, that we can use uh, for debugging program, but also for testing in runtime uh, some, some lines of code. OK, so uh, the language. What time is this? Okay, it's 10 minutes. Um, The, from a syntactical, from, from a lexical point of view, uh, a JavaScript program is uh, a JavaScript file. So JavaScript, the JavaScript interpreter will always see one big file with all the code that needs to run. Okay? We are used, and also in JavaScript we can do that, uh, to have modules or compilation units uh, that you can compile different time, uh, different files separately and they can import each other and so on. Okay, so these importing mechanisms are available in the language, but uh, uh, at the runtime uh, they are resolved uh, in a uh, very big uh, file. This creates some problems, uh, to see how to manage them, uh, in sharing information between the different modules because there's a risk of uh, uh, having the same name for different variables and so there we will need to understand some hiding of information. But apart from that, uh, the execution is very simple. There's a, just a single file which is read from top to bottom, and the instructions are executed by the interpreter one by one in order of, of appearance, of course. And uh, this instruction can rely on a standard library And stop because all other libraries that you use in addition to the standard library will be copy pasted inside the big file. So if you're using a library, the library itself will be inside your code. Before your function, you will find all the source code of the library. 
just imagine that you don't see it because it's something that is do the, 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 the interpreter is doing automatically. Okay, um, JavaScript is fully Unicode compliant. So all the strings, but also all the language or the identifiers of the language, name of the variables and so on, can use the full uh, Unicode declarator set. Okay? Uh, like, uh, like, a, like in Python 3, for example. So you don't need, the web HTML is a Unicode uh, language. We are talking about modern times, of course, okay? not uh, 20 years ago. And, um, okay, the syntax uh, it looks like C, more or less. Looks like C because it has curly braces. Uh, and most of the keywords, uh, if, for, while, uh, when, why, sorry, and uh, are, are borrowed, which are borrowed by, by the, C, 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 the C syntax. That they were copied by C. The complex comments are like in C++ or with the slashes. And the semicolons uh, are nearly optional, okay? So semicolons are optional, except in some cases where, can the, where the syntax can be ambiguous. So uh, well, these cases where they are uh, ambiguous are difficult to find, but uh, they may happen. Um, I find it useful to put some columns anyway, but if I forget them, it's not an error. Okay, there are, are only only some cases where okay, dropping a semicolon would lead. Uh, um, for example, if I'm writing, uh, uh, let's open file in demo.js. Imagine if you're writing, uh, it's not, it's not uh, still uh, very simple. So if I have a variable const a equal to b, semicolon, okay? And then maybe you have some other declaration, and uh, uh, we may have some, uh, something like this. Let's see, equal ecd. which is a multiple assignment, okay? Assigned to C and D, three and two, for example. Okay, this is clear. The problem is that if we drop the semicolon, this becomes uh, like this. This square bracket, instead of being the beginning of a new statement, uh, is an indexing operation on the previous variable. So there are some cases where the first token, the first character of a, of a new statement uh, could be misunderstood uh, as the continuation of the previous statement. Normally, it doesn't. So if I have an if here, there's no problem. If I have uh, a new va va variable um, declaration, there's, there's no problem. If it's CD are new variables, this letter, this keyword, is enough uh, for understanding, for letting the, the compiler understand that this is a separate instruction compared to the other one. And so the semicolon is automatically inserted. Some people argue that uh, since semicolon insertion is automatic, uh, you should always rely on that. Some people argue that since uh, it can be lead to some corner cases, you should always insert them. Pick your choice, I don't care. Hmm? Um, it's part of the, the rules for semicolon insertion is part of the language. So you can exploit it or not, as you prefer. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, people are fighting on this, okay? Really like to fight, you do put semicolon, I don't, I only put that on, uh, on even lines or something, something like that. Uh, all the rest, uh, okay, the, the syntax is very similar just to, to the C language, so it's case, case sensitive and so on. Um, there are, of course, since there are some you know, uh, um, arbit arbitrary behaviors, uh, people are, uh, or some, some companies are developing some style guides, for example, okay, say, telling, okay, uh, whether to put semicolons, whether to indent by two spaces or four, or something like that. And the editors usually can be programmed to follow this style guide. Or you can define your own style guide within the, <coughs> sorry, within the, uh, the allowed syntax. The only problem with semicolon are lines uh, which starting with, uh, starting with an open parenthesis. And so it can be ambiguous. 
So in this case, the previous line should always be terminated by a semicolon. So, but uh, these are the rules. Hmm? In our course, we'll always use the strict mode. And how to tell the interpreter that we are going to use strict mode is to have a first line which uh, contains uh, the statement uh, use strict in quotes. So it's not, these are not keywords use and strict. Uh, this is a string. Of course, because uh, it should be parsed also by a compiler that doesn't understand the strict mode. It should generate a syntax error. So if the first uh, line, except uh, comment, in a JavaScript file contains the string use strict, uh, then the rest of the file is parsed according to the strict mode. Uh, so we start always with, with this in our use strict. Uh, it will be our first instruction. We will see later on that in some contexts, so when importing a module, uh, when, when calling a, a, a file for another, the string mode is uh, automatic, so we don't need to write it down. There are some other clues uh, that tell the, uh, the interpreter that the file must be in string mode. There are some, uh, but by default at the beginning we are just writing simple scripts, uh, so we are using uh, this, this, this declaration at the beginning. Uh, and this fixes some, some pro problems. I, I said there's some ugly behaviors of the, of the, of the old language. Uh, and especially it increases the number of, uh, uh, of error messages or checks uh, that the language is doing and it forbids some dangerous statements and so on. Okay, this is a, some list of, uh, of items that are not, no longer valid with strict mode, but since we, we are not coming from the old uh, JavaScript, we don't learn them, okay? We just don't learn them. Okay, so uh, what, we are, what we have now is one file, the first line is the use strict, uh, and inside we can write our code. So before the break, uh, at least uh, we need to do a, a hello world. program and the print instruction is uh, console.log okay like system.out.printline line in, in java like print in uh, in python we'll print a statement uh, on the console which is the uh, the standard output uh, of, of the javascript runtime environment in the case of node the console will be the, the, the terminal where we are running the application in a browser, the console would be visible inside the developer tool. And for running it, uh, we can simply open a terminal and run it uh, with node and the demo.js and the name of the file. Uh, sorry. Demo. What did I do wrong? I didn't save the file, sorry. No. Okay, the first demo went bad. What's wrong here? Uh, module, so which mod? Okay, uh, Okay. there's something, the first thing to check with the node we might be with my node installation. I, yeah? Sorry. Yes, thank you. I always like having several tens of people looking at my errors because, uh, no, uh, we can. Uh, we have appreciated that uh, the error messages from JavaScript are not always friendly, okay? A simple find not found would be hello world, okay? it works. Okay, so one way is just to run, uh, open a terminal and uh, 
run the interpreter node on the source file that we wrote. At the beginning, we are doing, we can do that. Uh, after that, we can move uh, to a debugging environment, which is also integrated if we need to debug. Uh, we also use the debugger integrated with the, the um, Visual Studio Code editor. Okay. So apart from printing a string, we can uh, we should learn to create some variables and make uh, some computation after the break. So if you want, uh, we may have a 15 minutes break. Thank you. <laughs>